Paranorm podcast contains content that might not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. This is Paranorm Podcast. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Paranorm, the podcast where we chat all things true crime and paranormal. I'm Emily. I'm Sierra. And tonight we are doing things a little bit different. Also, I spelt doing with a T at the end, so it's doing. Oh, nice. <laughs> yeah, super cute. Um, and we are actually recording through midnight to ring in 2021. Da, da, da. So weird. I almost said 2020. Um, no, bitch, please. <laughs> <laughs> let's get the fuck out of this. Um, I just thought, what the fuck? Let's record and make time go by a little faster. And there's absolutely nothing I would rather do- be doing. So... Super Here we duper. are. Super dandy. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, time has no meaning, so let's do it. Social construct. Basically, like gender. So if you hear some explosions in the background, we are fine for the most part. Um, I hate fireworks. Like, I hate fireworks. I don't vibe with loud noises like that. Um, so this wine is going to go down very fast, and it has already gone down very fast. <laughs> But any do, any who, not any do. Any do sounds like a like a candy, <laughs> like honeydew. Honeydew is honeydew a candy? No. Okay. <laughs> it's a fruit. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> it is. <laughs> I forgot about a whole ass fruit. Oh my god, it's like one of my favorite fruits. It's Bill's favorite fruit. Oh yeah, my stepdad Bill. That's his favorite fruit. I like one of them. Um. Anyway. How the fuck are you doing, <laughs> Sierra? Well, it's been an interesting couple of weeks for sure. Yes, that it has. Uh, since we recorded last, and yeah, because you just got back from Indy. Yeah, I came back. I was spent a week with speak with spent a week with my family. Yes. Well, okay, if you guys hear that in the background, it's a very large, loud car that lives um, beside us, and it's super duper. So. Well, it's not as bad as the other day when I was sitting here and I literally had to plug my ears because there was a truck that had its bass so loud. Like, oh, my God. The windows were shaking. Oh, my God. That's how I feel with these fireworks. I believe it's the neighbors that are directly behind us. It, is way, it was way louder than the fireworks. You weren't sitting in my room and I was doing notes a few minutes ago. My Literally, my foot was against the wall of my like bed, mm-hmm. um, of my bedroom, and it was vibrating. I was just like, yeah. okay. I literally had to plug my ears yeah. because I thought my eardrums were going to burst. Oh, my God, no. No, 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 no. Anyway, you just got back from Indy, right? Yeah. Probably a couple days ago. Yeah, because we missed each other. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you left, and then I came back after you'd already left. Yeah. I just got back today at um, 2. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> yep. um, I went to Disney World for the first time, and that was a, an experience all in itself. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a very expensive. I did not realize how expensive, but it is very expensive. It was crazy. It was really fun. Like, it shouldn't be that expensive. It should not be that expensive, though. It was kind of ridiculous. I kind of, like, was like, all right. Like, one breakfast that we went to that I was lucky enough not to pay for um, was $42 a person. And, like, let me tell you, those eggs were nowhere near as good as the Waffle House down the street's eggs. So, yeah. Yeah. It was was definitely an experience. I had so much fun, though. Um, I got some cute mini ears Mm -hmm. um but yeah it was it was fun are they mulan ears yeah they're mini ears but they're like mulan colors colors theme there we go Mm. theme yeah i was trying to think of the word like the other day there was a word i could not think of oh god now i can't think of the word that i couldn't think of (laughs) super cute um but anyway yeah we had a pretty good christmas we haven't actually had christmas Mm -hmm. yet um because we were both like I was working. Sierra was in a different state. Um, So we're going to have Christmas tomorrow, which technically will be today in a little bit while we're recording. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Time has no meaning. (laughs) Um, So, yeah, we'll we'll let you know what we think of the other one's presents. (laughs) (laughs) which was so funny because we were both sitting in the car earlier talking about if it it was okay that we got the other one presents and like how many like the quantity of the presents that we got and 
we both think our presents are kind of dorky. And Sierra goes, I mean, I kind of think my present's a little lame. Or, like, did you say lame? Yeah. 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 And I was like, me too! <laughs> <laughs> Which, honestly, is so fucking on brand. Um, but that's that's where we're at right now, I yeah. feel like. So. Yeah. But other than that, you doing okay? I'm excited for you to at least open your dorky present. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm doing good. I'm good. All right. So this week, we, <laughs> Sierra's taught us, Sierra's staring at me in a very, very interesting way. Um, because this case does have a doll, <laughs> but I didn't know it had a doll. To I literally be fair. almost turned on the stuff and told her to just do it yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Which would be hilarious because we had so many technical problems <laughs> after she turned it on. <laughs> um, but anyway, I promise I like tried to keep the doll to a minimum. Okay. Um, anyway, this week we have kind of a double whammy rolled into a like sandwich. Into, into one is what I was going to say, but a sandwich is fine. <laughs> a sandwich is just fine. Um, you just want to hear me say that word, don't you? I mean, it, it was an after added effect that I got, but it wasn't like my main reason for saying sandwich. Uh huh, sure. It was so. mostly the hand motion. <laughs> um, you guys don't get to see how many hand motions I actually do because I have a lot of them. Like right now, I'm doing hand motions. Um, <laughs> it, just, it just is what it is. So it's a true crime and paranormal case, which okay. I think it's like the first one I've done, probably. Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, episode 21. Wow. Okay. We Take are. Get it off in a good. Yes. Start. Oh my god, you know what I just fucking realized? What? We're kicking off 2021 with episode 21. Nice. <laughs> I feel way too much joy. Like, I'm way too proud of myself right now. Oh man, we won't be able to do that next year. No, because, yeah, no, that wouldn't work. Because 22 is next, so. But we could do, well, it would be 44. It could be 44. Okay. Should be a multiple of 22. But we didn't start this at the beginning of the year. That's true. We started in July. I remembered. I don't remember what day in July, but I remember July. I remember very well what day in July. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't start on your birthday, did we? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Okay. Oh, well, I sound terrible. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Super great. Can you tell which one of us remembers things in, in this little dynamic? It's fine. <laughs> we... It's fine. She's going to add it to the list of reasons why she kills me. So I get a book for that. <laughs> <laughs> one of those little pocket field journal things. <laughs> Oh my god. Okay, the wine's definitely here to say hi. Um anyway, I'm not even like full fucking paragraph in right now. That's not on par for us. Yes. Okay, anyways. All right. I'll let you continue. Okay. Let's see where we Okay. We are talking about the Barrick Bloody Four. And do not ask me to say that again because I don't think I'll be able to. Okay. Um, and I got most of this research from a bunch of old newspaper clippings. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm talking a shit ton. Like, mm -hmm. I had to zoom in and then get my reading glasses on top of that. Yeah. Because I still couldn't see. <laughs> <laughs> um, as well as a show on Travel Channel called Ghost of Morgan City. Um, I think it was episode six, um, I believe, but... This shit was so fucking hard to find anywhere else. Like, even, like, trying to backdate, like, articles or anything. Like, mm -hmm. there was nothing. Like, nothing. And I was like, okay, maybe there's a book I can rent, you know? Mm -hmm. Nothing. And I don't understand why, because this case is so fucking wild. Like, there's so many little weird things where I'm just like, what? I'm sorry, what? <laughs> like... You would think that, one, it would be more so, like, prevalent in the true crime area because it's weird. Yeah. But, seriously, it was so hard to research. Um, as usual, all of my sources are on the website. So, like, if I got wrong what episode of um, Ghost of Morgan City is, it'll be on there, the crook version. Mm -hmm. um, so, the town of Berwick, Berwick, 
Berwick, we're going to say Berwick, um, is located in St. Mary's Parish, uh, Louisiana, and it is like, it's like a hot minute east. East to the right? Or east? No, west, okay. Um, <laughs> it's like a hot minute west of New Orleans. Mm-hmm. Um, I had to think about it. I got there eventually. Um... I had to sing the song, but I got there eventually. <laughs> uh, did you At do? least you remember the song in the correct order. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't forget about eating waffles now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But anyway, I'm going to start this off by telling you about the ghosties. Okay. Um, and this starts like with the show. So I'm going to be bouncing between the show and like the newspaper clippings because like they had a lot of information in between. And I left out some from the show because one, they got into some weird weird little tunnels that I just Mm -hmm. did not approve of okay um and then the newspaper clippings were super sexist so Mm. yay I mean it was the 60s just gonna give that a little bit of a for some reason you like the era (sighs) I love the era but like so many sexist racist assholes all right anyway in 2015 wait we're still in the 60s in 2015 oh yeah (laughs) You're talking about what I just said. <laughs> like, you didn't hear me. <laughs> but, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> anyway. Mm-hmm. Okay. They're so. just out now. Oh, no. They were very out then. Their hoods were just a little bit longer. All right. Here we go. In 2015. <laughs> I graduated high school. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to figure out my life. <laughs> <laughs> Same. Okay. Anyway. Bubba and John. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> They're actually a really cute couple. Um, move into a home with their three daughters, and things seem to be going okay. Mm-hmm. With one of um, the, their youngest daughter one day helping them clean out the attic mm-hmm. because the people that lived there before had left, like, all these, like, toys and, like, um, religious relics in the attic. Mm-hmm. And they didn't, like, want to throw them away because right. they're kind of, like, not okay, I guess. Um so the youngest daughter, her name is Riley. She ends up the recipient of one of the children's toys that they find in the attic while they're cleaning it out. Uh, from what she gets are a couple of, like, porcelain, like, they look like porcelain dolls, but I don't know if they're actual porcelain dolls. Right, okay. Because um, they might just be, like, a really cool-looking plastic. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> well, maybe not in the 60s. Maybe not, but this is 20. Oh, well, yeah, oh, the dolls, yeah, the dolls would have been from the 60s. Okay, yeah. Um, do, do, do. Okay, so she ends up having a couple of these dolls in her bedroom. Mm-hmm. And one day when Bubba and John, the dad, the dads, because it's, mm-hmm. a, it's a gay couple, and they're, <laughs> let me just tell you, they were so funny in this show. <laughs> just wait till the end because it gets so much better. Um, they go out. I, mean, I don't know where they're at. Mm-hmm. They're probably at the grocery store or whatever. And the doll's arm moves up. And Riley notices this, freaks out, runs out to tell her sisters, and then all of a sudden all of the lights start flickering. And as they see this happening, they try to run out of the house. And the door slams straight in, like, the face, Mm -hmm. like, of all of the sisters trying to run out. Um, Because they have, like, a parlor room Mm -hmm. before you get outside, you know, before you get to the door the front door, so the door to the parlor room slams shut, and they can't get outside, Mm. so then they run to the back and get out that way, so the sisters' names are, um, Taylor, Riley, and Emily, they they all just fucking, they bolted, Mm -hmm. like smart, smart children should, and are just kind of, like, straight up chilling outside when a police officer pulls up, and (laughs) apparently this town has so many paranormal, like, activities. I mm-hmm. feel like that's like the movie, but like occurrences mm-hmm. that they have an on-call paranormal team. Oh man. Right? I don't kn- Okay, this is where this is where I get a little bit skeptical because I don't know if this show is for real or if they're just like fucking with us all. Right. Because like it just gets a little a little fuzzy. So, I'm going to in my um ignorance is bliss kind of thing <laughs> say that these people are fucking 110% real. Okay? okay? Um, don't kill my vibe, people. Um, so, and while, like, when the investigators get there, um, they are, 
everyone's outside speaking to Bubba, who is one of the dads, and um, he starts to tell them that one night he is tossing and turning and couldn't sleep, and he turned, like, he had turned away from John Mm -hmm. and turned towards his bathroom and saw a woman in the corner of his room, and it was an older lady with Big ass glasses. He's mm-hmm. like, really, it's really important. You know, these were big ass glasses. Um, with like kind of a, like the salt and pepper light bulb hair, mm-hmm. you know. No, Sierra didn't know what the light bulb hair was, but it's like every old lady, like old, old lady has the light bulb hair. It kind of looks like a popcorn is on her head. I feel like that would be the way to describe it, wouldn't you? Like Google light bulb hairstyle and there you go. It's just like that short, sensible cut. <laughs> short, sensible cut that they get permed every every other week. Yeah. And then they brush it out. Yes, and then they brush it out. And make it poofier. Yeah. Um, anyway, who is just kind of like in the corner watching him. Soup's fine. Totally fine. 10 out of 10. No. So while like the majority of the investigative team is outside talking to like John and Bubba and the children, Mm -hmm. um, one of them is inside like full on like talking to the dolls and Mm -hmm. the children in Riley's bedroom. That was that was a little girl, Riley. Um, Riley's bedroom (laughs) and like full on telling them that they're going to get rid of them and that um, like while he's talking to them, takes a pillow and covers up the doll which I can full on see you doing and just like walks out of the house. <laughs> He's like, I don't like dolls. And just puts the pillow in front of the doll and walks out. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> this is this is why I think they mess with me. <laughs> oh god. That's why I think they mess with me because it gets a little it gets a little iffy in there. You just uh, I mean, I guess if you just over it's like, guys Come on. Seriously? Like, this is what we're Which, doing? the doll sitting on the bed is really creepy. Yeah. Um, but she, the one standing beside it, it's like a beautiful, beautiful doll. Mm-hmm. Like, for, as far as dolls go, it's it's real right. pretty. Um, but he just, like, walks out and leaves the pillow on there. But, like, maybe don't get creepy dolls from your attic and give them to your small child. Just, just maybe. I mean, not now. <laughs> No. Like, not after all of this. No. <laughs> um, so, then they go back to, like, after after they tell them all this stuff, they go back to the local historian. Um, I don't know where the fuck they get her, but she looks like she is having none of these people's shit. <laughs> and I kind of love her for that. Um, was owned, like, they find out that the home was owned by a local dressmaker who made clothes for dolls. Mm-hmm. And the description of the lady is, like, Exactly, like pinpoint onto the lady that used to make dresses in the home, like what Bubba oh, had described. Yeah, okay, yeah. Like they showed the picture, and I was like, "The fuck!" Mm. Like it, it looks exactly like it. And again, ignorance is bliss on this one. Okay, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they aren't quite satisfied with that. Just that you know little blip of history, and the team goes back to the home. So, back at the house, the first investigator dude, who kind of looks like the off-brand Brendan Fraser, like, from The Mummy. I'm going to show you a picture. I'm going to Google it for you in a little bit. But, like, he seriously, he looks just like him. But, like, like Dollar Tree version. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. His name is actually Ben Hansen, but, like, I can only refer to him as the off-brand Brendan Fraser from now on. Because... That's what he looks like. <laughs> um, and he's speaking with Bubba's mother, whose name is Dorothy. So a cute little winky dink mm-hmm. um, there since my mom's name is Dorothy. And she's the one that suggested that we do Louisiana this week. Nice. And this was the first case that pulled up. Oh, my goodness. How weird is that? That's crazy. Um, so this Dorothy mm-hmm. looks like the quintessential southern grandma. Okay. Like the lady that you see... Outside the Crackle Barrel. (laughs) That is this lady. (laughs) Um, She has her arms crossed like one. Like, the way this woman is sitting, it's like, oh, yeah, I've seen her a billion times. Um, She's just got, like, that vibe about her. Anyway, 
she begins to tell like her experiences in the home, like doors opening and shutting behind them, mm-hmm. a cabinet doors opening, silverware kind of rustling, and uh, things all of a sudden started to escalating. Guess what? Right around the time that they brought those little dolls downstairs. Mm-hmm. Um, so off brand Vernon Fraser um ask her what's the scariest thing that has ever happened to you here <laughs> miss dorothy gets right to the fucking point <laughs> okay <laughs> and goes you know the other day when i was speaking on the video chat her words not mine nice <laughs> with riley i saw a little girl in the background with her hand on her shoulder just just gonna let that sit right there for you mm-hmm. and i asked her and i was like who's the little girl behind you and she goes there's no one here with me and apparently she was standing on the right side of her with her hand just resting gently on riley's shoulder and just just chilling, Dorothy describes her as having a strange look about her with coal black hair and things like uh, bangs, you know, mm-hmm. the straight cut bangs that they yeah. had in the 60s. Um, so Dorothy gives up, like, just gives up right there. And she's like, Riley, why don't you go inside and get dad? And at this point, the little girl that's not mm-hmm. there but is there turns and looks directly into the camera like, she heard Dorothy. I'm getting goosebumps right now because to watch this lady describe that literally freaked me out so bad. And they had, like, the little reenactment, you know? Mm. So, like, oh, man. Um, and, like, gets closer to the screen. <laughs> <laughs> I'm um, like, I'm sorry. So. Like, why are you telling her to that, go away now? <laughs> that video chat eye contact was just super cute. Mm-hmm. 10 out of 10. Would not recommend. Yeah, no. um, so if Miss Dorothy can't get any more exciting, she then drops another fucking bombshell on us and tells us that she used to be friends with a little girl who looked exactly like that little girl. Oh my goodness. By the name of Lucy Verrett. A little girl who so happens to have been murdered in the 60s with her entire family. Oh my goodness. Um, so back to the historian we go. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm telling you, this lady is like, <laughs> she gives no shits. <laughs> They're like, oh wow, oh wow. And she goes, uh huh, here. <laughs> and like, hands in more paper. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we go through this wonderful historian lady, and we learn that in the 60s, around April 13th, 1966, um, Barbara Verrett and her three children were murdered in their home. They were reported missing a five, like a whole five days later by um, Barbara's common-law husband, Bernando Me- Mejia. We're going to go with that because okay. I don't know how to pronounce it. I'm so sorry if that's wrong, but it's M-E-J-I-A. Mejia? Yeah. Um, who had been on a week's-long job on a fishing boat. Mm-hmm. Um When Bernando came home, he found in the house, like, it was a complete fucking wreck. There was blood everywhere. And, um, like, he reported them missing, obviously, like Mm -hmm. any smart human being would would do. And a hundred National Guardsmen joined the search looking for them, as well as surrounding police officers. Yeah. And fire departments as well. Like, just anybody? Yeah. Basically, anybody who could look for someone was helping. Okay. So, besides Lucy and Barbara, Mm -hmm. um, Barbara's other two children went missing as well. Um, Brenda, who was 15 at the time, Robert, who was 11, and then Lucy was was 13. Um, Now, something odd that also was happening was Bernando's nephew, Roy, who was 27, at the time was also missing and was believed to be on the way to Mexico Mm -hmm. from what relatives had said. Um, Roy had been staying at the home the time of the murder and police automatically believed he was responsible and charged him with murder and car theft. Like the moment they figured out he was gone and Barbara's car was gone, they were Mm -hmm. like, they're dead. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. The amount of blood that was going on in the house as well. 
and then the signs of a struggle. So I don't know how, I mean, it was the 60s, so I guess they could just kind of do that then. Yeah. The car theft was because Barbara's car was gone, and um, it was discovered like a couple weeks later, um, just a few miles outside of New Orleans. Mm -hmm. So when they found the car, there was a hacksaw and a shovel in the trunk. Also, trunk Trans, like auto corrected to Trump, and we don't need that kind of negativity in our in our life right now. <laughs> Those didn't really lead to anything at the time. So after a few weeks of searching for the bodies of Barbara, Robert, Brenda, and Lacey, they were found off of State Route One, um, in the Gulf of Mexico, like in the Gulf of Mexico. Mm-hmm. Um, one daughter was nude, while the other Verrett bodies were partially clothed. They were found by Barbara was found. Mm -hmm. Because they were found separately. Like, only a little bit separately, though. Like, a couple hundred feet. Oh, okay, gotcha. So, Barbara was found by two women looking for a place to go crabbing. One afternoon, um, they found Barbara's badly beaten body laying half-submerged in the mud and water after they were about six miles south of Leesville and 13 miles south of Golden Meadow. I have no idea where either of those places are, but somebody might. Mm -hmm. We did just get some listeners in Louisiana, so maybe they do. The three children were found the day after. Um, They were found about 500 feet off of State State Route 1. Mm -hmm. Um, The brother, um, Robert, Robert, had appeared to have been shot, while Barbara and the girls had appeared to have been beaten to death. Uh, Barbara was in her underwear when she was found, um... Brenda was only in a blouse while Lucy was completely naked, and Robert had only a shirt with the cross still hanging around his neck. Mm-hmm. Um, at this point, Roy, who is basically her main suspect, um, was like native to the area, so he knew like where to go, where to go, and like where the best place to hide would have been, and had like a lot of relatives in the area. But all of them had said that they would cooperate with the police, which technically they're related to the victim's family, too, because it is his, Rory is the nephew of uh, Barbara's husband. Right. So, like, there is, yeah, there is a related as they are to Roy. So Mm -hmm. that's some fucked up shit right there, man. Um, And they described hate when people describe people like this they described him as a quiet man who didn't really make a lot of friends but got his work done so like okay congratulations he probably murdered a whole bunch of people but we're gonna say he's hardworking. super cute um that information i got from the newspapers and so now we are going back to what i got from the show does that make sense yes that's okay all right is that okay with you Probably. I mean, sure. <laughs> I'll let you know after. And, uh, <laughs> okay, so I'm going back to the show, and this is where they veer a little bit, which I couldn't confirm these, mm-hmm. so you know how much I love to speculate wildly. <laughs> um, and let me have, let me just say that again. I am speculating wildly on this one. Gotcha. Okay. okay. All right. So are they, I feel like they have a bigger legal team than you and I have, though. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they said Since that, we have zero. Right. Y- y- yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, they said that the children were found in sort of like a triangle formation and then they go on to interview more police who say it was the worst crime to ever have happened in St. Mary's Parish. One detective even says my favorite line. I've been doing this for 62 years, and that was still the worst case I have ever seen. <laughs> and man, every time I hear that, it just gives me a little bit more reason to live. So... <laughs> Oh my goodness. So here is the crazy part. There is no documented motive as to why Roy murdered his uncle's entire family. Except for the fact that people seem keen to the idea that he's a psychopathic sexist murderer who was powered by um, his sex drive. So as one... One newspaper reported it. Another one said that Barbara, since she was a divorcee, seemed to flaunt that fact. 
Hmm. And was very victim blamey. So, yeah. Um, he was found some days later in the swamp hiding, and then that bitch was arrested. Mm-hmm. Um, so the trial was a little bit bumpy due to the objection, like objections constantly being made. Um, now, some of them were a little bit frivolous. Like the first one was that the first one was fair. Um, it was that he wouldn't get a fair trial in St. Mary's Parish mm, yeah. because of how publicized it had been. Right. So he got moved to a parish over, which was St. Martin's Parish, which was still in the same district. So his attorneys filed that same uh, oh, kind of they're like, like... this is not good enough. Like, yeah, this isn't good enough. Um, so he was moved and... Again, his trial was moved again um, to Baton Rouge, which was a completely different district. Like, um, mm-hmm. the parish, the St. Mary's Parish was 16th district, and then this one was the 19th district, I believe. Um, which, again, fair, but his legal team was not exactly thrilled about it, and they tried to get it moved again on like, some legal jargon that I didn't really understand, but to no avail, it didn't take... Like, They're like, no, this is good enough. Like. Basically. And, and so it took place in Baton Rouge. Now, at the trial, the biggest piece of evidence that they had, or, like, the smoking gun, so to speak, was the fact that Roy had shot off part of his finger after, like, or during the commi- committing of the murders and had left a bloody fingerprint at the crime scene, which... Is, is and isn't that big of a deal. Right. Because fingerprints can be misconstrued, especially if it's in motion and if it's bloody and has objects on it. Um, so... Also, like, well, I guess you haven't really said, like, what his side of it was, but... He didn't give one. Oh. There was no motive. Now, there are... But I mean, like, he didn't say, like, oh, I didn't do it, like, I was... Or he I, literally, he just said he didn't do it. And then he turned and was given, like, he gave a confession. But now there was also some doubts about this so-called confession on whether or not it was coerced. Because it was, again, the 60s and this isn't a white male. Right. So. Because, I mean, like, depending on his situation, he could have gone there and was like, oh, crap. Like, you know, I don't know what his yeah, life was exactly. like. And he just ran. So yeah. he could have been there. Yeah. And did the, you know, got the fingerprint. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, sorry. I couldn't literally, I'm telling you, when I tell you this part of the case was so underreported, it was so underreported. Mm-hmm. And it was so victim blamey that I was just like, sure, it's her fault that she was murdered. That doesn't even make sense. No, it doesn't. Um, now, Roy was a f- subsequently found guilty and was sentenced to death, which he later appealed and was sentenced to life. Now, again, couldn't find out when he died. It was either in 1996 or 2001 because there are two Roys on file. And his full name was Rudolph, so mm-hmm. it gets even more confusing. Um So, like, y'all must be fucking asking, like, I was fucking asking, how the fuck does this have anything to do with this house? Or these little girls? Or anything like that? Um, especially when you take into fact that the house that the family was murdered in was down the street. And had been torn down with an overpass put over it and a playground put underneath the overpass, which... Don't even get me started about the safety concerns that I have with that. Yeah, that doesn't seem quite right. (laughs) The pictures don't look quite right either. (laughs) Let me just say that. (laughs) Um, uh, Hold on, I have to take a drink break. Alright, so, guess who we get to go back to? Lucy. Oh no, the history lady. Yes, my historian lady. (laughs) (laughs) Um, so we go back to the lady, and she has all the pictures for us again. Mm. And in the pictures, there is this doll that looks exactly like the doll that was in Riley's room. Now, yeah. the pictures 
are from Lucy's room. The girl that was murdered. Yeah. You catching on? You good? Yes. I know there's a lot of names and I'm so sorry and it's so okay, fucking so convoluted. Okay, so she has pictures of Lucy's room that has a doll that looks exactly like the one that's in Riley's room. Yes. At the house where they ran out. Yes. Got it. Um, and the pictures are from the crime scene, so... Oh, gotcha. We know there's probably some negative vibes attached to that kind of materials. Mm-hmm. Um, do 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 Hold on, I have to scroll down, everyone. So, <laughs> um, the original town ta- house, the original house, like I said, was torn down, mm-hmm. um, to make way for a freeway, and again, it really does not look safe. I'm gonna attach these pictures on the blog, and of course, put them on Instagram, but, like, <laughs> it really does not look safe. So, at this point, back to the TV show we go, mm-hmm. um, and off-brand Brendan Fraser thinks that the spirit of Lucy is connected to the doll, and she knows Dorothy, so she thinks that, like, they think that, like, Lucy is trying to, prote- to protect her home girl, Dorothy, mm-hmm. at this point, and um, is protecting them from a poltergeist in the home, because most of the time, like, spirits won't, mm-hmm. like, Reg, your run-of-the-mill spirits won't, you know, flicker the lights and slam doors. And um, someone was also grabbed, like, one of the investigators mm-hmm. was also grabbed. Um, the back of her shirt was pulled on. So that's not kind of, like, spirity, yeah. chill not behavior. Just like, I'm just here kind of thing. Yes. And I know this sounds like a whole bunch of jar- like jumbled jargon, but basically the ghost Lucy feels the need to protect the girls, kind of just replaying the last moment of her life, is the, is the bandwagon that I'm on. Okay. You know? Just kind of... Because you know you know where I stand with that. Like, I feel like they, they're they either replaying the most recent memory or the most... The, the thing that they had the most energy in and, mm-hmm. like, traumatic events would leave behind their most... You know, a lot of energy, a lot of energy. Um, so after the energy grabs the back of the medium mm-hmm. shirt, uh, medium, mediums, medium shirt, they do a, like a little impromptu exorcism and basically just hope for the best. Mm. <laughs> um, and things just like just kind of like hand things back over to the dad. Oh, geez. the dads. Sorry, um, the dads, and um, so like whoever is haunting these poor people, this poor family, just kind of like they're hoping just went away, like. But if they didn't, they probably are haunting someone else now because at the very end, um, the dads say that they are giving the haunted fucking dolls to the goodwill, uh, oh, geez. <laughs> or putting them back in the attic. <laughs> Well, we know how well the attic thing goes yeah. with dolls before, so there is that. I mean, there wasn't really anything happening before they got the dolls out of the attic, so... Yeah. That that was a thing. Hmm. So that is my case. <laughs> and this is 2020. Oh. We are literally, like, three minutes out, man. Okay. <laughs> are, are, oh, I'm, like, I'm, like, I'm, like, anxious... But I'm so excited at the same time. I know, like, a new year is not going to change actual, you know, yeah. terrible things going on in the world. it can be, like, a mindset. It can be, like, thing. a mindset kind of thing, you yeah. know? Like, I, I accomplished a lot this year of shit. I mean, <laughs> I made it out of the South for the first time ever, and I made it to Disney World for the first time ever. So that's something, right? Yeah, I think so. Okay, that's, that's something. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pull up my little thing here. I don't remember how to do it, which, of course... Maybe if I just, like, yeah, if I tap it. Okay. So we are officially counting down. Oh, okay. Gotcha. (laughs) I I figured it out now. But, yeah, how are you feeling? Um, anticipatory, I guess. Yeah. I'm, like, I'm, like, we feel weird because Mags is in here. Mags is usually with me. I know. And I'm already stressed because these fucking fireworks are coming. (laughs) Yeah. I don't think I've, I've, I've made that very clear. Gonna, I hate fireworks. We're going to try to get off before too much of that like, <laughs> gets going. Yeah. But um, I think the whole school situation is stressful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because. Just because. Because I, I want to, like, I have to work. But, like, at the same time, like, I want everybody to be safe. Yeah. And, like, I don't want us to take unnecessary risk. But, like, you know, I yeah. don't know. Yeah. I don't want it to be insecure either. You know? Yeah, so, yeah. 
That makes sense. Um, so that'll be interesting. Um, it'll just it'll be a very interesting year. We're getting a new president. Uh, yeah. Hopefully a better true. president. Um, yeah, we shall definitely see. Yes, that's for sure. But yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited to see what happens with the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, we're gonna be at episode twenty two soon. Um, so yeah. Guys, tell us what you're excited for. <laughs> or if you're not excited for anything, just tell us that too. <laughs> because half of the time, it, the yeah, world. Yeah, I mean, has... what, like, kind of like a bucket list for 2021, you know? Yeah. Like, yeah, I haven't figured coming, out mine completely. Coming yet. out of 2020. Like, oh, guys, we're 10 you... seconds out. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> you're about to hear some serious fireworks because they were some serious fireworks earlier. But. We are now in 2021, guys. Oh, my gosh. Yay. <laughs> Welcome. I'm waiting for the shotgun shots <laughs> because we also live in the South where we can't really differentiate between the fireworks and the shotguns. So, I mean, because that's what people do. Oh, yeah. They shoot guns. I mean, uh, that's been literally... Is it really all you want to do? Yeah, pretty much. Okay, well, it's starting, guys. So I hope you guys have a happy new year and a great rest of your week. And we'll be back next week. All right, check us out on the blog and social media. Oh, yeah, you gotta plug all the no, things. No, no, you plug gonna, all the things. I we were gonna sign up. <laughs> you gotta plug them, man. Anyways, okay, so the blog, Paranorm Podcast at paranormpodcast.com. Um, the blog has all the photos and information and sources and resources. You can contact us through there, uh, or you can send us an email, paranormpodcast at gmail.com. And then, as always, follow us on Facebook and Instagram. The, I almost said Twitter, and that's please not don't. It. No, I don't have Twitter. <laughs> I don't know how to work Twitter. It just ain't vibing with me. Okay. Um. So Facebook and Instagram, and um, we have a Patreon page. Yes. Um. We do. Go see we're us on the Patreon. We're looking for patrons in the new year. Yes. But if you can't support us financially, we totally get that because we're kind of there too. And um, but just uh, share it with somebody you know, and. Make this your little friend time. Uh, <laughs> your little friend time. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds terrible. What do you that think? sounds <laughs> real terrible. That's not what Don't I meant. Don't make me laugh. It's going to make me cough. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, if you know somebody who likes uh, paranormal true crime stuff... You can share this podcast with them. Or if they don't, it. just like shove it down their face. Like if you have that racist um, relative that really just needs a dose of reality. <laughs> we don't have any personal experience whatsoever with that. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> anyway, my computer's going to die. And this year. <laughs> it's a new year. It's so finally here. So we're going to go, get, gonna see go get drunk and watch Netflix, everyone. Goodbye. <laughs> Bye. Bye.